Hello and welcome to Can Month Day 7. This video is a follow-up from the last video I did on colonialism and Canada as a settler colonial society. And I'm going to be talking about some book recommendations that actually discuss this issue a lot more eloquently and profoundly than I did. First book is The Inconvenient Indian, a curious account of Native people in North America by Thomas King, who I've already talked about during Can Month. I was first introduced to this book on Ron Lid's channel, so I will link below the video where she talks about it. He tells the real account of colonialism in order to cut through the mainstream Canadian discourse like I talked about in the last video, covers colonialism, a little bit about what drove it to happen, and all the different acts and institutions that are based in that foundation. He jumps between the past and when this happened, and more present stuff that's happening in terms of different movements in the 60s to the 80s. One of the most interesting chapters for me was the chapter where he talks about the media and representation of Indigenous peoples, wherein it's often seen as a good thing that you have actual indigenous actors portraying indigenous characters, that kind of idea. But he kind of makes the point that like, look, even if it is real indigenous people playing indigenous characters, like, the characters are probably still going to be racist, so does it even really matter? He also talks about alcoholism and how that's portrayed in the media, in the differences between how white people are presented with it and how indigenous people are presented with it. And he also talks a lot about sovereignty and two and how those were actually recommendations that were made by various commissions and reports in Canada in the 90s. And nothing was done about it. I think the best thing about this book is the way in which he jumps from the past to the present and everywhere in the middle. That way you're getting insight to the current prevalent issues and what they are informed by and therefore he's establishing the link in neocolonialism, which is again what a lot of Canadians lack in their understanding about the whole situation. Thomas King also has one of my favorite voices as an author, and he is so funny. And there's one of those like author interviews in the back, and it's something that he talks about, whereas that he felt like he needed to use humor to make this more palatable for people to accept and really think about. The next book is I Am Woman, a Native Perspective on Sociology and Feminism by Lee Miracle. This book definitely covers what Thomas King didn't really go into in his book, and that's the specific intersection of being an Indigenous woman in a post-colonial slash neo-colonial society. It's written through poetry and personal essays, where she talks about the internalized violence inside and outside of communities, having to confront white colonial society and proving your validity, the generational trauma of residential schools and how that particularly affected women, again, neo-colonialism, also how Indigenous rights movements interacted with second wave feminism in like the 60s to the 80s. There is just so much in this thin little book, like everything is so important. Now to get into some more kind of academic recommendations, the first scholar that I would recommend is Benita Lawrence. She's written a lot of really amazing stuff, in particular an article called Rewriting the Histories of the Land, which is Again, talking about all the stuff that happened in Canadian colonialism that doesn't actually get taught at all or is recognized as being an official part of the history. The last two books I'm going to recommend were both written by academics, but they're actually pretty widely available. And I will link below links to all the books I've mentioned, but particularly those because they have a lot better descriptions. <laughs> Another prominent scholar is Shireen Razak, who was the editor of a book called Race, Space, and the Law, Unmapping White Settler Society. And she wrote a chapter in that book, chapter five, called Gendered Racial Violence in Spatialized Space, The Murder of Pamela George, who was from the Saltu Ojibwe Nation, living in Regina, who was murdered and raped by two white college boys, and this happened in 1995. This chapter maps out how, in considering race, space, and the law, how this murder was an act of colonial violence. The last book I'm going to mention is called Unsettling the Settler Within by Paulette Regan, which came out in 2010 or 2011, and I actually think it was her dissertation, and it's about how white people need to unsettle themselves in terms of their settler positionality in a colonial country. I found a PDF from the foreword of this book, which I'm going to read a little bit to you up. I know it's like a thin to read out passages, but it perfectly captures what I was trying to say in the last video. I have to read this from the Gandalf laptop. In a global era of apology and reconciliation, Canadians, like their counterparts in other settler nations, face a moral and ethical dilemma that stems from an unsavory colonial past. Canadians grow up believing that the history of their country is a story of the cooperative venture between people who came from elsewhere to make a better life and those who were already here, 
who welcomed and embraced them, aside from a few bad white men and some renegade natives who had other more American ideas. Canadians like to imagine that they have always acted with peaceful good intentions towards us by trying to fix the Indian problem, even as they displaced, marginalized, and brutalized us as part of the colonial project. Canadians do not like to hear that their country was founded through frauds, abuses, and violence perpetuated against the original peoples of this land. Canadians are in denial in extremists. So if you missed it from yesterday's video, that was the point I was trying to make.